Welcome to the Tourism News Wrap. My name is Jason Amo. Coming up, tourism recovery and restart strategies dominate latest Voyage Africa Travel magazine. UNWTO officials visit Italy as borders reopen across Schengen Zone, and Labadi Beach Hotel unveils health measures as international flights to Abidjan resumes. The latest issue of the Voyage Afrique Travel magazine is dominated by COVID-19 and how tourism and travel are adjusting to the new normal. Unlike the previous edition, when the pandemic was yet to make any impact on Africa's tourism scene, the newest edition is awash with stories and information on strategies, destinations, countries and institutions are adopting to restart tourism while ensuring the health, safety of tourists and workers. The cover page of the 13th issue features the call by the World Tourism Organization for responsible reopening of the tourism sector. Here is publisher and managing editor of Voyage Afrique, Kojo Bintu Williams. So the new edition of Voyage Afrique Travel Magazine looked at restarts and recovery strategies that destinations are putting in place. And as you see from the cover page, uh, the Secretary General of the UNWTO, Zira Polo Dikashvili, had mentioned that how people have destination needs to start responsibly and also what this African destination particularly because they've been very uh, good in terms of managing the crisis and what mechanisms and protocols they are putting in place to ensure the sector restarts. And above also look at, you know, we looked at how people who are making change in the tourism sector are celebrated uh, in, uh, in the magazine. Against the backdrop of the reopening of borders across Europe, a high-level delegation from the World Tourism Organization has arrived in Italy to begin the first official visit to a member state since the COVID-19 pandemic brought international travel to a standstill. Speaking from Rome to CNN's Richard Quest, Secretary General of UNWTO Zura Polidikashvili reiterated the message of trust as key towards recovery. After three months being at home, and we really saw that it's easy to travel. We can travel tomorrow and uh, I'm sure that step by step the borders will open. We will trust more each other. We will be more responsible tourists and it will decrease the risk that the pandemic will become back. I, again, I want to give some optimistic messages to all the world to don't panic, to follow recommendations we gave uh, to all countries and uh, to be more responsible. Ghana's Labadi Beach Hotel has instituted aggressive and detailed strategies to address concerns about health and safety as the hotel inches towards resumption of operations. The hotel closed to the public after the country imposed lockdown measures in the greater Accra and Kumasi metropolitan areas. The executive assistant manager, David Idwafo, said the hotel has made the health of its guests paramount. If your temperature is above 38, you will not be allowed into Labadi Beach Hotel. All right. So right at the reception, we also practice social distancing or physical distancing. We have marks on the floor so you don't get too close to the receptionist. The pens that you use to write are sanitized. You, one person at a time, you use the pen, you put it in another container where it's also disinfected. You go to your rooms, all rooms are disinfected, proud to any arrival. And so in the room, you are provided with a face mask, you are provided with a hand sanitizer. And of course, in these days, occupancies are low, so we don't give one room twice to, to guests. So you check out, it takes a day or two before another guest can even check into the same room. So we make sure that every angle is covered. In our restaurants, we are observing strictly the, the physical distancing um, um, you know, from the government. The government of Kenya has introduced health protocols to guide operations of this tourism and travel sector. The 43-page document establishes broad protocols for all tourism establishments, facilities, tourists and operators. Here is Kenya's Minister of Tourism and Wildlife, Majid Balala, in his address during the launch of the document. Today we are launching the health and safety protocols for the tourism and travel industry. We have thoroughly gone through in partnership with the private sector to formulate these protocols. They have been approved by the Ministry of Health of Kenya. They have been approved by the World Tourism and Travel Council and the UNWTO. Today, we can say Kenya is safe 
and the magic awaits you. Almost two-thirds of international travellers are ready to travel immediately after the lifting of international travel restrictions or within a year thereafter, a South African Tourism Survey on International Travel has revealed. The report follows an international tourist behaviour survey which gives insight into consumer travel preferences post-COVID-19. The recent online sampling survey by SA Tourism Strategy, Insights and Analytics team solicited views of international tourists who have visited South Africa in the past three years. The CEO of South Africa Tourism, Sisa Shona, had this to say. The results of the survey are really, really quite encouraging. Uh, not, not only for South Africa, but for the continent at large. We are starting to see certain things that are coming through from uh, the modern day traveler in a COVID environment. The first one becomes about health safety, that becomes quite key. And the health protocols that have been introduced actually go a long way to give comfort to anyone traveling on the continent. Secondly as well, is that part of the preference that is coming through is from open spaces. And as a country, South Africa, even the continent, we've got an abundance of open wide spaces that is actually quite uh, comforting in the current environment of COVID, where you need social distancing, as an example, you know, from the perspective. The Uganda Hotel Association is urging government to expedite action and support for the hotel subsector in Uganda. With over 450,000 workers sent home on unpaid leave and the survival of the hotel subsector on the verge of collapse, the Hotel Association body warns government to partner the private sector to fashion a stimulus package for the sector. CEO of the association, Jim Biamugisha, spoke to Tourism News Wrap. Um, so the Uganda Hotel Owners Association, um, uh, many of our hotels have been closed since March the 21st when we officially went under a uh, nationally mandated lockdown. And since then, the hotels have had to close and send all their staff home. Of course, the most affected were the hotel staff. Uh, this is an industry that employs about 453,000 uh, hotel staff and 400,000 of those had to go home for unpaid leave mostly. Uh, for three months, no salaries, no nothing. And the majority of these are young people. The Felix Ophebouani International Airport in Cote d'Ivoire has resumed operation of international flights. This comes barely a week after domestic flights resumed in the Ivorian capital. The country's Minister of Health, Eugene Akaaule, earlier in the week revealed this after a National Security Council meeting. However, land and sea borders still remain closed until July 15. Following the development, Air France has announced a gradual resumption of scheduled flights from Paris to Abidjan from July 6, 2020. The Tanzania Tourist Board has cancelled this year's Swahili International Tourism Expo due to the current global coronavirus pandemic. The board in a statement said it has carefully monitored the ongoing crisis and due to this, regret to inform you that Site 2020, which was scheduled to take place from 2nd to 4th October, has been postponed. There's more news on www.voyageafrique.com and all our social media platforms. My name is Jason Amu.